the basic design is a bookshelf that has an LED strip to shine light up at the books that are on the shelf and the ceiling to reflect that light back down onto the books the kids are reading. These are for bunk beds, top bunk. The ceiling's right there. So our kids should be able to have their books and read them too. Got three-way switching going on. Our kids can turn off the lights when they are falling asleep or if they forget, we can turn them off at the end of their bunk bed without having to crawl up in bed with them. The power is 12 volts over USB-C power delivery, mainly because I just really wanted to do that, but also it made for a nice, really clean install. Check out the Instructables link below for the straightforward how-to. This is the not straightforward at all video about trying to take something that's in my mind and making it happen. Two bunk beds. This is gonna be really cool. Yeah. And it'll go on like this. This is the plan at least. Wall, shelf, book. This strip will be thermal taped to this. And that's pretty much it, except for the rest of it. I know that this is the length it's gonna be. Go ahead and set up the other pieces to match. Cut. Hey, just as satisfying. I'm cleaning the aluminum with acetone so the thermal tape holds well, and then knocking down the rough edges. If anybody knows a good way to remove these types of things, please comment. Or maybe I chop off right at the edge there, then the back part is supported. I'm gonna try and peel off the top part. Boom, it's a lot easier if the back part's supported. Oh. Can you see that? Let's try and get my face. Here, ha, ha, ha. The LEDs will go here. This part will actually reflect back some of the light onto the books that are like this. But the light will generally be going up towards the ceiling. I wanna know, for each strip, how much current is drawn, because that'll affect my power supply decisions that are coming up very soon. I'll, I'll do a voiceover on this later. I don't really feel like telling the camera right now. I just wanna get this done. I just realized I was discussing my feelings on camera. Who does that? Not me. For 12 volts. This looks really good. Oh, look at that. Really like what it does there. Whoa, that's cool. I, I don't know. I don't want to put a diffuser on it. But I got it though, right? Oh. 2.2 amps. Ah, that's more than I planned on. Bummer. So full power, 2.2 amps. Is it warm? Usually you can feel on the LEDs themselves the warmth, but yeah, the heat dissipation is great. Ready for it? I am. The joint. Ah. The ideal situation would be where you can kind of gradually see the aluminum getting heated. I'd like to see orange back here. And I do. That is awesome. It's working. Oh, that's great. Oh, look, that's, uh, that's cooler than this wire here. Yeah, I can even feel that wire getting a little warm. Ah, the thermal stuff is good. Whoops. This thermal transfer, it's happening and we can see it. It's so cool to be able to visualize and see kind of what's going on. I thought I'd pre-cut these to the right length, but I didn't. I need to cut them down, which is good because now I have other wood that's eligible for this project. I cut them for another project that I ended up not doing. So at this point, I hadn't really thought through the rest of the shelf design-wise. I just knew I wanted the light a certain way, wanted three-way switching, wanted aluminum for heat dissipation, but I hadn't really thought through what the style would be. I knew a shelf and I knew two boxes on the sides to hold the electronics, but that's pretty vague. Now I gotta figure out the rest of the design, not just visually, but also functionally. How are the wires gonna go through this thing? How is this thing gonna mount on the wall? Maybe a sort of a two-tiered, uh, sort of uh, style with the Baltic birch edges being sort of protruding. I think that, because I like that. Yeah. 
So the question right now is, do I want to do this the right way or the easy way? This is going to be above a bunk bed and it will not be visible from below and there will be books on top of it. So if I use glue and screws, that'll be really quick, extremely solid, uh, especially with the screws there. The alternative would be a couple rabbits and a couple dados, which I just don't feel like doing. Maybe I should do it. It won't be hard. It would actually help align it. Let's change the plans. I'm going to use dados. I don't usually do this, but dados will help align all the parts. I'm going to use dados and rabbits. All right, all done, round door is done, everything fits, time to assemble. I just realized something. Since he likes knots in wood, maybe I should use a different front panel. Maybe he'd enjoy that hickory or something else like that, but that means I'm gonna have to cut it and surface it and plane it and all that stuff. Um, I think he'd like it regardless. Let's see what I have. Wouldn't I be the total lamest dad if I thought of it and realized I had the perfect piece of wood right here that's pretty much the right size and didn't do it? I gotta do this. I gotta make one of these out of this. Two, so both shelves match. That's it. Oh man. Yeah, at times like this I realize how, how quick it is and how worthwhile it is to actually deal with hardwood instead of plywood. I love Baltic birch because it's there and it's easy and quick and ah, but hickory. Oh man. It's great. Starting to look like a shelf. Now since the top and bottom of this thing won't be visible, I'm going to use brad nails to hold this thing together while the glue dries instead of clamps. In most situations, I would use clamps, but in this case, I'm trying to get this thing done and these aren't going to be visible anyway, so I'm using brad nails. Arr! Don't do that! Ow! Got a big splinter. Small splinter, but it feels big. It's a shelf. It's a shelf. through. That's not a problem I have. I have plenty of problems, but not that one. Well, now it tells a story. Daddy was a doofus and he shot a nail through, two nails through, especially one in a critical zone. And uh, that was really close to my hand. Adam Savage shoots through sometimes. 
I watch his videos, I'm like, oh, he's awesome and everything, but he shoots through. He shoots nails and staples through things, and by golly, I don't anymore. I've grown up and matured, and I don't do that. Newbies like him, it's understandable, but I'm not immune to the shooting through problem. All right, it's a new day. I woke up this morning with this shape in mind. I was like, I gotta do it this way, with this shape, I think. I mean, here in a few minutes, I'm gonna see that it's not gonna work how I expect it to. And this, this is a lot thicker than I imagined. I can deal with that, I think. Dado right here and slide this in the dado. But that's kind of a tight bend, I think. Oh. It needs to have a platform for, say, an alarm clock, block the books from falling off this way, and it needs to hold a switch, a toggle switch, maybe a dimmer, and it needs to look nice. Maybe aluminum. All right, so here's my current dilemma. I don't like the aluminum finish now that I see it with the wood. It gets too industrial, too mill finishy, and I don't think it looks right. Also, I'm trying to figure out the side box design, and the walnuts didn't seem like it would bend for the curve I wanted. So then I thought maybe aluminum flashing, that'll bend just fine. Then I'll try and get both aluminums to match by somehow scuffing it up or sanding it or something like that. Ultimately, I decided to sandblast them instead and try to make the walnut bend. Boom. This was a pretty exciting point. I mean, all the complicated routing and stuff was done. Until the storm of realization rolled in. I didn't make enough parts. I was hoping a strike of lightning would happen then. I made only enough parts for one bunk bed. After moping around for a while, I challenged myself to a race against the clock, which is also known as a terrible idea around power tools. If I win, I get ice cream. Second place gets Christmas Reese's. No, I was in second place. Actually, I just lost. Loser gets Reese's. And after several races and even more Reese's, I eventually had the parts I needed to move on to the next step. That fits so well. That does bend, and it does bend well, and I'm very happy with that. It's perfect. Like, it doesn't feel like it's higher or lower on either side. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the walnut faces apart from the rest of the box. That's a very difficult corner to finish with spray, and I'm just gonna make it a lot easier on myself by spraying it now. I won't have to worry about the challenge of getting spray in those tough corners. For this project, shellac is ideal because it dries crazy fast and there's a good chance I'm going to need to do some repairs at the end of this project and shellac is easy to repair. Gluing them, I'm making sure to keep the glue with a squeeze out on the inside. I don't mind how much glue squeeze out happens on the inside, but I really don't want any glue squeeze out to happen on the front of that walnut. Well, that's encouraging. I really like the design. I'm really liking it now. I'm not just telling myself I'm liking it. I have completely abandoned projects that were even finished before that I just didn't like. That bottom edge really needs to line up with that. It's noticeable if it's off.
that looks really nice. I really don't like sandblasting. I'd like to say that I'm manly enough to just go sandblast and not be bothered by all the itchy stuff, but I wear pants, coat, everything, and I still get sand in places I didn't even know I had. I'm gonna try and beat the storms, use those as incentive to go ahead and uh, sandblast these things. I just forgot the mounting parts. That's okay. Okay, now this is not gonna be a very traditional attachment method, but it is gonna be proper, not by the standards of woodworkers, but I'm not a woodworker, I'm a programmer. When alignment's tricky, sometimes I use hot melt glue to do the initial tack, so I have a second or two working time to tweak the alignment before it sets in. Now if it solidifies too fast, you'll have a gap really quickly. So be sure to use a high temp glue gun and just do one single pool of hot melt glue. I'm gonna do a bigger glob right here. So that will give me enough time to work while it's still liquid and ooze out the back or inside the hole. There we go. And once everything is tacked, I went through and pre-drilled and added screws to secure everything nice and solid, but it's kind of sloppy. Okay, let me just fess up and say this didn't go as I planned. I mean, I anticipated using little metal brackets, but when I got in here, I realized I didn't plan for having anything to attach the brackets to. And if I would have thought about it, I would have cut out this flush with this, because then I could have aligned this with that using just some sort of plate or something like that and opened up the circle more and it would have been a lot better, but I didn't do that. So I'm going to do this awkward thing with the other three and not record what I'm doing because it's just embarrassing. This isn't right. I didn't plan on it being proper, but I plan on it being right for the project. I mean, this is fine for the project, but not right. Next, I profiled the corners of the aluminum to fit underneath the little hangover part of the side ends. Resandblasted spray coated with a matte clear coat and installed them. All right, I'm gonna stop this video here. Part two will be about the guts of this, implementing USB-C power delivery for 12 volts, three-way switches, and mounting this thing to the wall. So subscribe and be notified so you can see that when it comes out. And be sure to check out the instructable linked below. That'll cover that side of things in detail and more of a how-to sort of format.